Welcome back to the Hawkeye Garage. I am Joe. This week's Wednesday night video is a car refrigerator review video. Yes, long time subscribers will know that I love car refrigerators and I love doing reviews on them, especially when they are sent to me for free, admittedly. Uh, this is from an Amazon seller. It's something a little bit different uh, from what we have seen in the past on the channel, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. Some good so not so good, and of course there will be a link in the description for you guys to go over, check it out yourself, decide if you'd like to get one or not. Stay tuned. Here it is, uh, and we have a name up here, I'm not sure what name that is. Uh, I can tell you I just checked the Amazon link today uh, to remind myself you know what the price was and the exact size and stuff and it's got a different name in the picture uh, as I've come to find out uh, a lot of these overseas refrigerators that are sold on Amazon and and other places will all appear to be the exact same unit but will have different names on it so this is as you can tell considerably smaller uh, than what we're used to seeing on the channel I have my 44 quart and my 80 quart dual zone um, this is a 19 quart, um, fairly small size. This is actually, if you think back to your, your childhood days and that blue igloo cooler that you took to all your soccer games and your baseball games and to picnics, this is really close to that physical outer size. Now, of course, as we know, there's a big cooling unit in here. It's got a compressor. This is actually a refrigerator. It has a compressor. It's not just an electric cooler. Um, it does take up, obviously, a lot of interior space, but still plenty of space um, for what this refrigerator is. Um, I, it took me a little bit just to kind of get my brain around why you would buy one this size, but then, I started thinking about my parents, my sister's family, some of my other friends that aren't into giant off-roading vehicles uh, going overlanding and camping and putting refrigerators in the back of their rigs that are too big uh, for what they will ever need, um, guilty as charged. Uh, but something like this, if you just if you don't want to use a cooler, for your road trips where you don't have to worry about running this on days on end, keeping all of your stuff cold. If you just want to run it in your car during the day, keep your stuff cold until you get to your destination, then you're going to take your stuff inside or you know you need to use it on a daily basis. Or if you're a college student and you want to use a refrigerator in your dorm and have one in your weekend adventure mobile, this would be perfect. Um, Obviously, fits lots and lots of cans of pop and stuff like that uh, in here. Usually, they're rated in like cans. I don't know what this one is. I know I've had a lot in there. Um, I've been running this for, I don't know, a little over a month or so. In our house, actually, that's where I usually run the test ones. Just because I can keep an eye on it. I can see how it's running. A um, couple things on this one has a very nice display, um, but it is very bright. If you were going to be car camping or you're gonna have this in a tiny camper or something, that's gonna be really bright uh, at night. You're gonna wanna cover that up with a towel or something um, that might keep you awake. Like, it's, it's really bright. It doesn't look like it would be, but it is. It's a very nice touchscreen uh, display and uh, yeah, it's, it's bright. <laughs> uh, also, it is rather noisy out of the other two, what, two refrigerators that I have. This is definitely the loudest um, compressor. It's not nearly as smooth sounding, um, and it is noisy to the point where sometimes I'll be watching TV and I'll hear this in the other room and think, what is that noise? And then I'll remember, ah, it's the refrigerator. So there is that. Um, one bad thing that I'm gonna tell you guys about and then followed by a good thing. Right now, I have it set in Fahrenheit. Um, I have this set at 32 degrees. It's where I keep most of my refrigerators when I'm running them. Um, you'll see that it says it's nine. That's not correct. Um, and then sometimes it will say it's 79 or 80 or 65 or 33. There was a problem. Uh, I've been in contact with the manufacturer um, 
Apparently, if you run this in Celsius, this is not an issue, but in the States, we run in Fahrenheit. Um, the like ambient temperature on the inside of the cooler, um, the display is not always correct. Apparently, there was a glitch in the programming, and they have assured me that the ones that are for sale now work, but I was not going to not tell you guys about that. Um, because, you know, that's something that is important. Uh, like I said, I've had this set at 32 degrees, and of course these all fluctuate um, between, you know, five degrees plus or minus that, te that temperature um, when it's running. But you'll see, it's, I had this unplugged a little bit while I moved it. It has formed ice uh, in here. So it's definitely been keeping things cool, uh, regardless of whatever wacky temperature uh, it says on the side. One thing that I really like about this that my other two refrigerators don't have that I wish that they did is this. Soft closing door. Now, you still have to latch it. Um, it does have an actual um, push latch um, there. You still have to latch it. How many times have I smashed my hand whacked myself in the back of the head while I'm trying to dig around in my other refrigerator, had a child, open it up, just and then just let it completely slam um, closed. This, that is fantastic. I don't even know if they know that they've done that uh, in, in the production process, that they've given it soft close, but I really, really like that feature. All right, well, there you go. Like I said, it's a little bit different as far as it's uh, considerably smaller than what I'm used to using. I don't know that we'll, I don't know that we'll ever use that on a trip just because my 40 uh, quart one pretty much just lives in the back of the GX. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll put it in the back of one of the other vehicles. But like I said, we've been running in the house in an extra room and it's kind of been where all of our overflow like pop and juice boxes and bottled waters and stuff have been going like for when we have company over and just because that stuff takes up so much space in the regular refrigerator plus running them inside gives me a good chance to you know test them as far as their longevity no it's not getting bounced around in a car and it's not getting run off 12 volt well it is getting run off a 12 volt because it has the inverter when you plug it into your wall Anyway, um, there, like I said, some good with the soft close, some bad with that wonky kind of programming. I will say that the company, uh, when I was talking to them uh, through email, they said, hey, if you don't want to do a video on it, it's not, not a problem. We, we fixed it, but if you don't want to go through with the video, that's fine by us. We can still see about working together uh, in the future. So it wasn't like um, they told me that I had to make the video uh, on their product that's not working properly and I had to sell it to you guys. So there's that. And of course, I'm not getting any financial uh, service other than a free refrigerator, which hopefully some of my friends and family will be able to put to use uh, on some of their road trips and we'll be able to actually get some long-term testing out of it. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and turn those notifications on. Normally my videos are on Sundays, um, but it has been kind of hard for me to hit that every single week. Uh, we've been, we've had a really busy and awesome summer and I really have not been killing myself over taking out extra time to make a video, but I'm gonna try and get on that back uh, to every Sunday for you guys. I have plenty of stuff to do videos on. I just uh, have been enjoying myself doing other things. So uh, follow the links in the description over to the refrigerator, obviously over on Amazon. It's $190, you know, plus tax, it's prime. So not a bad price uh, really at all. A Yeti cooler is like double that probably, um, but Anyway, you can also follow the links over to my Instagram and my Facebook where I'm posting much more frequently than once or twice a week and a lot more stuff than just car refrigerators or cars. So there is that. Uh, until the next video drops, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.